Now I'd like to show you the way that uh, I made the the T-square, uh, very super cool T-square fence to the extrusion. Uh, first thing you want to do is you want to set the tension on your, your cam. Now that's too loose. So I, you know, I always bring out one of my drawers here and I just push to see if I can, if I can shift it. See, that's too loose. But this was just right from assembly. So the first thing you want to do is, is go ahead and bring your set screws in just a little bit. You know, give them a good half turn. Let's see what that feels like now. That feels really good right there. And I'm looking on the front. It looks nice and parallel on the front. I'm looking at about the same distance of spring on either side. That may be a little bit more on this side. I think I will, I think I will uh, loosen this one up and maybe tighten this one down. I like it to be nice and, you know, nice and symmetric. That feels really good. Now let me see if I can do my, my push test on it. I can move it a little bit. I'm going to tighten it up just a little bit. That's, that's a very good starting place right there. Let me raise this up a little bit. I can see that I've got that side just a, a little bit higher. I like to start off kind of even. That's not going to change the tension. Okay, the way, uh, the way I make the extrusion to the T-square to the unit is really simple also. So you can see I have the nylon glide on the bottom already. So it, it's, you know, it's not tightened down so tight that you can't move it. It doesn't have to be super tight. If you make it too tight, you'll make it flare and, and it won't lay nice and flat against the bottom. So just enough to keep that set that uh, screw below the level so that screw can't scratch your cast iron top. And what I like to do is let the extrusion hang off the table saw a little bit like this. Now when I, when I assembled it, I left the T-nuts very loose on the top. So I just want to start here at the front and I want to put my finger up underneath it, so I'm pushing the 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 T-nut, the uh, the screw all the way up, and then just come over here, get that one started. Now move back one, push that up. There you go. There's two, three. That one maybe just a little bit tight. Maybe turn it off, turn it a little bit. Okay, so there's four. Now this extrusion is a little bit long for this. Uh, this is going to be used for something else. This is actually the size I use, the, the uh, 40 millimeter by 80 millimeter, which is the most common size uh, that I think is, is best for this, this setup to start with. But uh, normally it should be between 40 and 46 inches, somewhere like that. This one's a little over 48, and so it's a little bit long, but I don't want to cut it just for this example. Now what I like to do next is, I like to flip the, the uh, fence over, and I like to tighten the screws up ever so, ever so slightly, just so I still have enough uh, slop on the top to set squareness, but when I do get ready to tighten it, all I have is about a, you know, half a crank uh, to, to get it set completely. So I'm not having to reach up underneath and, and fumble with it when it's, when it's real loose. Allen keys are great in some regards, but they're also a pain in some regards too. So there I have a little tension on it, but I can still move it. So now I want to go ahead and, and mate this to the rail. And now I'm ready to, uh, now I'm ready to set my show you how I set squareness. I have this aluminum, uh, three-quarter inch aluminum solid uh, piece of stock. You could just as easily come up with a piece of uh, wood that, that was milled to fit exactly in the groove of your, your uh, table saw miter slot. I am 100% confident that my miter slot is exactly parallel with the cut of my saw, as close as I am able to check it. So I just pop this guy down in here, bring the fence up, Put two hand screws on it. I don't over crank it. I just kind of nice and light, just to kind of hold it in place. 
Now I bring the, see this is, now see this, this can still be moved. This is still loose here. And so what I do is I want to make sure that the, that the overhang, that when we had this milled, we had the, the shoulder here milled ever so slightly smaller than the four, uh, the 40 millimeters, just so however you set it up, you're not going to have any interference in the plane of the table saw top as it comes off here. So you just want to try to make sure that you're good and symmetric the way it, it lines up. Okay, that feels real good. That's all you got to do. Now go ahead and tighten the go ahead and tighten the, the cam and then just reach up underneath and tighten the back two screws. Take the clamps off. That looks really good. Now I'm going to uh, release the tension and I'm going to carefully flip the saw over or fi flip the fence over and then go ahead and tighten these two. And since I've already kind of pre-tightened them, it's really nothing but just a, you know, I do have these obstructions here. Is that the right one? Yeah. You know, I don't go overboard, but I do give a you know a nice good a nice good tension on it. Okay, so let's see how well this lines up against our aluminum bar now. Bring it up, see how nice it slides, everything looks really great. Bring it up, I'm going to bring it close and then start tightening it down. Get it tight, man that looks awesome. But if you did want to, uh, you know, if you felt that you were uh, uh, ever so slightly off, now you could come in here, say I wanted to kick this out a little bit, well then I, that means I would, uh, that, would that would mean I would uh, release the tension on this set screw on the inside or tighten this one to to kick the whole unit this way. So once you do have it very, very close, you can still use the set screws that, that uh, press the spring steel. You can use those for final micro adjustment also to really dial it in. Some people like to have the saw uh, canted out slightly. I, I have never done that. I always just try to get the saw running as absolutely parallel as possible. But it's just, it's just the way you, it's just whatever you feel comfortable with, you know. I like to just keep it as straight as possible. But that, that looks, you know, pretty perfect to me. I don't know if I can really improve on that. Okay, so the final thing that we need to do is we need to adjust and make sure that, that our fence is, is running exactly parallel with the, the top of the saw. And since we have these set screws on the top, not only is that going to, we'll be able to raise and lower each side or everything together, so we're going to also be able to to make sure that the fence is nice and square this way and then also make sure that it's absolutely parallel this way and so I checked before I put this down and, and the thickness of that is ever I mean fractionally less than an eighth of an inch and when I put these two rulers together that is exactly perfect right there so I'm gonna bring those back here and I'm just little little uh, little high at this end so all I have to do is just now bring this down. Oh, let me take a little tension off here so it's not going to hang it up. That looks, that feels real good. Now I want to check the squareness too. Make sure that I'm good and square. hard to improve upon there. It looks right. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm ready to go with that and get back to work. So it's a, it's a pretty simple setup to, uh, you know, no matter how many times you change this out, you can always go back in and find really square and true settings again really quickly because it's got a lot of uh, built-in adjustment. So there you go. And now you can of course adjust your pointer over here uh, however you want. You know, I don't, I generally don't like to touch my, 
my uh, beautiful extrusion to my carbide saw blade. And uh, since all saw blades are, you know, have a, a little bit of variation in, a lot of times you have to zero one, each one out. So my method is to uh, measure with a ruler from the inside point of the, the rake of the teeth to the fence. Set my pointer to that, take a test cut, measure that test cut with one of my mid tutorial rulers, and then refine my setting to the measurement off that, uh, off that test cut. So that's the way I've always just kind of done it and just kind of, you know, I have lots of scrap of plywood that I'll just, you know, run through there and, you know, and do a test cut that way. It's pretty, it's pretty simple to set up. Pretty simple to take off and get out of your way too.